Paul McLaughlin. Uh, we uh, will kick off the uh, Timmons Health Table with uh, an introduction from Mayor Peary. Good afternoon. Uh, I apologize for that bit of a technical glitch uh, to start the conference uh, this afternoon. As, as always, to everybody that's on the line, thank you much for taking the time out of your busy day to participate in this very val valuable forum for uh, sharing communications surrounding COVID-19 in our in our area. Um, again, as always, a shout out to everybody that's been involved in this from from the beginning and, and helping us getting through this crisis. We know it's a very very busy time. And we know this week is critical to us uh, in understanding just exactly how the COVID-19 is, uh, is being spread in the community. With that, uh, did I hear that uh, Brooke Van Hathier was on the line? Chantel. Chantel, thanks. Thank you, Mayor Peary. Today, uh, as, of to, as of last night, we have 874 tests completed for the PHU area. Uh, 45 uh, cases are positive. 601 uh, cases are negative, and we have 228 tests pending. Um, we currently now have 22 uh, cases that are resolved, and we still have the two deaths linked to COVID-19. We are, as I said, reporting three new COVID cases among residents in the health unit area, so we are now up to 45 cases. The first case is a male in his 50s. A second is a female in her 40s. Both are residents of the Timmins area. The third case is a male in his 60s uh, from the area of Cochrane, Matheson, Erica Falls, and Smooth Rock Falls. All of these individuals are in self-isolation. With these positive cases, we are confirming that one of them um, is a positive case in a staff member of another retirement home. Uh, we are working with the home to investigate the case and assist them in taking all the necessary steps to protect the staff and the residents. Uh, we will provide more information later on our website. We are uh, trying to protect the privacy of the um, of the staff member as well as uh, give them um, the opportunity to the retirement home to contact and advise residents and their families and their staff of the positive case. With, um, we will be we'll be sharing more details uh, later. Yesterday, the government of Ontario announced the COVID-19 action plan for protecting long-term care homes, which outlines the actions that the government is taking to present, present, protect residents and staff in long-term care uh, long-term long care homes. Um, we are uh, continuing to urge everyone to work together to stop the spread of COVID-19. Um, at this time, we do need positivity. Um, we are very fortunate in Northern Ontario that our communities are well connected. We have seen in the past our communities come together to overcome many challenges and come together to support each other in difficult times. This is not different for COVID. We need everyone to work together, follow the precautions, and to help each other get through the COVID-19. Our assessment centers are open in Capus Casing, Timmins, Cochrane, Iroquois Falls, and Horn Payne. Um, an appointment is necessary to be able to access the COVID center. And as mentioned uh, previously, we are increasing the testing in our region, and this will help us give us a, a better understanding of the situation for COVID-19 and help inform us in our next strategy. If anyone is experiencing mild symptoms or symptoms that are not have not been typical, we, we've labeled them atypical symptoms, to please call uh, their primary care provider or to call the Porcupine Health Unit to, um, to discuss the possibility of getting testing. Our swabs, um, Dr. Canton spoke this morning a little bit about the time, uh, the turnaround time for results. Just so you are aware, we do have a laboratory here in the Timmins area. They do receive swabs for all uh, health units and assessment centers in the Northeast. However, they are not necessarily tested in Timmins. They may be um, shipped out to other uh, labs that have more capacity to take on these. The laboratories are working uh, many hours and working 
very hard to get the results back as soon as possible. Um, so we do we do ask for patience uh, from our, our community members um, as we work through all of these tests. So we are asking people to continue. Um, we are seeing cases, not daily, but almost daily, which indicates that we still continue to need the public to, uh, to practice those preventive measures. So please wash your hands often. Please don't touch your face, your nose, your eyes, your mouth. Stay home if you are not well. Limit your outings to only essential errands. Stay home as, pos as much as possible. Do not visit friends, family, neighbors. Only visit with those within your home. And please don't travel to other communities during the time. Thank you um, to everyone who is practicing um, these preventative measures and to our community partners who are working hard to respond to COVID-19. Uh, we do appreciate all the work that everyone is doing. So stay home, stay safe, be kind. Thank you. As always, we'll open up the questions from the media to uh, Corporate Health Unit. Hello, uh, my name is Bienvenue Senga, and I'm from Radio Canada in Sudbury. Um, my question is, uh, as it was mentioned, the Ontario government unveiled yesterday its uh, action plan for long-term care homes, and it includes the obligation for workers to only work at one facility, but uh, employees won't have to comply until April 22nd. Do you have any concerns that that might put some long-term care residents at risk, even if it's only for a few days? And uh, can I also have a, uh, if, it, if I may have an answer in French, then that would be uh, appreciated. So, bonjour. Um, fait, um, le bureau de santé Porcupine et tous les bureaux de santé à travers la province, ainsi que les, uh, les établissements de soins de longue durée, les foyers de soins de longue durée, doivent suivre les documents, les lignes directrices uh, qui sont, um, sont donnés par le ministère de la Santé. Alors, euh, à date, jusqu'à présent, euh, les, euh, les foyers et nous, en suivant ces lignes directrices, euh, on travaille ensemble pour s'assurer que euh, les précautions sont mises, en sont mises en place pour protéger le personnel ainsi que les résidents dans les foyers de soins de longue durée et dans les maisons de retraite. Euh, le temps, euh, Dr. Williams, qui est notre euh, médecin hygiéniste, de l'Ontario, euh, indique que le temps donné euh, était pour permettre euh, le temps de, de mettre en place le personnel nécessaire pour euh, soigner les, les résidents dans chaque foyer. Euh, comme j'ai mentionné, nos, euh, nos foyers et nos euh, maisons de résidence travaillent ensemble pour assurer euh, que les mesures sont en place pour protéger. Alors, euh, on continue à les appuyer, euh, on continue à les aider, alors euh, pour qu'on puisse venir à bout et mettre en place les mesures qui ont été incluses dans les nouveaux documents pour les foyers de longue durée, soins de longue durée et les maisons de retraite. Est-ce que vous avez des inquiétudes quand même au niveau de… Juste le, 22, le 22 avril, il reste encore quelques jours, il y a, il y a des possibilités que des gens puissent être infectés, est-ce que… Justement, vous parlez du fait qu'il y a un nouveau cas qui est une personne qui travaille dans un foyer de qui travaillait dans un foyer de soins de longue durée. Est-ce que vous êtes inquiet que même si on vous donne un peu de temps pour euh, s'ajuster, dans les quelques prochains jours, il pourrait y avoir des cas d'infection? Um, comme j'ai mentionné, les, les, euh, les maisons de foyer, les maisons de retraite et les foyers de soins de longue durée suivent les directives qui sont en place depuis quelques temps maintenant. Alors, euh, et continue à prendre euh, ces mesures et en ajouter de plus à mesure qu'ils sont, sont capables. Alors, euh, je crois qu'ils font de leur mieux et, on, comme j'ai dit, on continue à travailler avec eux. Est-ce qu'on peut savoir la personne en question, c'est quand leur dernier jour de travail? Euh, comme j'ai mentionné, nous avons pas les, euh, on ne partage pas les détails à ce temps ici. On veut donner le temps euh, euh, au foyer 
à la maison de retraite de faire les contacts nécessaires. Et, ma, et, et honnêtement, je n'ai pas les détails euh, présentement. Puis, est-ce qu'ils ont, est-ce qu'il y a assez d'équipements de protection personnelle? Est-ce que tout le monde en fait? Je sais que c'était aussi inclus dans le plan d'action. Est-ce qu'il y a assez d'équipements de protection personnelle? Um, ça, c'est une question que, euh, qui est pour nous à poser. Je ne suis pas au courant du, de l'équipement personnel. Um, je sais que euh, ils doivent porter des masques maintenant. Tout le, le personnel doit porter des masques pour euh, le temps qu'ils sont au, au, à la résidence. Euh, alors, mais c'est une question que je ne peux pas répondre. C'est une question qui est plus visée au, euh, au foyer. Merci. Other media? Hi, I, I, it's Lydia from CTV. Yes, Lydia. Hi, uh, this question is for uh, Chantal from the health unit. Okay. Hi. Um, With the announcement uh, that the Premier made about an increase in safety measures at uh, long-term care facilities and retirement homes, how do you think it's going to benefit facilities and workers and residents and the general public at uh, this point in time? Because now with the announcement of another positive case, um, uh, people are going to need some sort of reassurances. Um, um, I think several of the, um, the measures that were included in the action plan will be followed by our... Um, long-term care facilities and our retirement homes. Um, so I think they already had several of the measures in place to protect the health. Uh, additional me uh, measures, of course, will just further protect our, our um, residents and the staff working in our long-term homes. So I think it's, uh, it's a positive thing for our, our nursing homes and our community members. Okay, and one more question. Um, your website was down this morning and we were unable to get the number of cases this morning. Um, when you say you're going to give us more details on your website about uh, this positive case, uh, how are you going to reach out? Are you going to reach out to the media to let us know? Um, I, we haven't made that decision on how we will share the information. I had printed the number of cases and now I can't find it. I have printed the number of tests, and I'm. No, I no, I'm, I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, the details. Yeah, that, our um, okay. our website is up now. I don't think it's been updated. Um, we uh, have not decided how we will share the details yet, so we'll keep you posted. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, uh, Chantal. So we will go to uh, Simmons and District Hospital. Uh, Kaylee, please. Hey there. Uh, so we don't have any new updates, but as always, uh, we are taking requests and um, questions from the public. So if anybody does have any specific questions, please give us a call at our general information line at 705-267-2131, or they can email us directly at generalinquiries at tadh.com. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Kaylee, and we'll go from there to uh, Brian Marks at the DSAP. Go ahead, Brian. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, yesterday, uh, EMS responded to 16 calls in Timmins. Uh, one of the calls failed the screening protocol. Uh, food security, uh, 80 meals were distributed at Salvation Army last night. On the homeless front, we continue to house approximately 60 people across three locations at Northern College, McIntyre Curling Rink and Living Space Cedar location. Living Space personnel uh, continue to work on initiatives to keep the patrons occupied and maintain social distancing. Um, in terms of child care, uh, the Cochrane DSAB has received final approval from the Ministry of Education to open licensed emergency child care. Uh, centers that have been approved are working on uh, setup and preparing for a final inspection with the Portland Health Unit. Child care staff will be trained on new policies and procedures for emergency child care. Uh, there will be limited spots available as the ratios are lower to further try and protect children and staff from the spread of COVID-19. Child care centers that have been approved are the YMCA Timmins uh, at the Poplar Avenue location, Northern Treasures Home Child Care, which is directly operated by the DSAB, Boot de Chou uh, in the town of Hearst, uh, Rayon de Soleil Jacques Cartier site and Capus Casing, 
Um, please note that the child care centers will not be taking registrations. Applications will be through the DSAB Children's Services Department. Um, we're in the process of setting up online applications, and people who are eligible will be able to apply through the DSAB website as of 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, the priority is for frontline healthcare workers in hospitals, health units, paramedics, police, and fire across the district. Um, there must, uh, in order to be eligible, there must not be an adult uh, available at home to provide childcare services. And uh, in addition to the application, all eligibility requirements will be posted on our website as of 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh Brian, I, I didn't hear, do we have anybody from Timmins Police on today with any updates? I am here, uh, Tom, but I don't have an update, but I can take any questions if there's any from the meeting. Uh, we also have uh, staff from bylaw, so yesterday. Um, and I will open the questions. Uh, May I ask the chief a question? It's Lydia. Yeah, go ahead, Lydia. Yeah, police chief, I mean. Sure, go ahead, Lydia. Thank you, chief. Um, I know that uh, council is uh, voted in unanimous in, in favor of a curfew, um, but uh, police have not recommended that. So where, where does that stand now with the curfew? Is it, you know, if, if police recommended no, but councils voted in favor. Uh, where do things stand with a curfew in Timmins? Well, I think I can correct you on uh, on the vote. I think it wasn't a vote. It was just uh, more or less a, a show of support. Uh, the mayor can correct me if, uh, if I'm wrong here, but uh, it was just a show of support. The mayor brought it to uh, members of council, and he did receive uh, some support if he was uh, going to uh, consider that moving forward. Uh, once again, uh, we're in... Uh, constant contact between uh, the fire chief, myself, uh, the CAO, the mayor, and of course, uh, Steph uh, from bylaw. Uh, we met yesterday, we had a discussion, very brief discussion on this whole uh, curfew issue. It is something that's being uh, considered by the mayor, uh, but he's doing it in consultation with all of us. So at this point, uh, again, it's just a consideration. Uh, okay, any timeline? I'll have a Lydia, I'll have the mayor just follow up while we're on that subject so he can follow up with Okay. Okay, yeah. thank you. Lydia, the, the, it's, it's very simple, really. Uh, as I said yesterday, I'm in daily contact every morning uh, with the police chief just to, to find out exactly what the situation was in the community the previous night. Um, and the trigger point would be something like this. In that morning conversation, if the police chief says to me, we've got to do something about this, our officers are spending the majority of their time answering COVID-19 calls and they cannot perform their regular duties, we've got to do something, then, of course, we've got the uh, support from the council and the, re and the request from the chief to uh, pull, the trigger on a, pull the trigger on a curfew. Um, obviously, um, well, let me say first and foremost, that's not the case. Um, the last three nights, I think it was, the numbers were... Uh, one, one, and I think there was two calls, uh, two calls last time. Um, obviously, the residents are respecting the rules, and they're respecting each other, and they're respecting the efforts of the Timmins Police Service. Um, and there is no requirement at all right now to consider um, uh, pulling the trigger on the, on the curfew. You can imagine that this is something that we would want to be very delicate uh, uh, about using. We are approaching, hopefully, although it didn't feel like it this morning, and I don't think the weather forecast is any better for tomorrow, the end of a, a winter. The days are going to get longer, and we've got to be conscious of the fact that people are going to be wanting to sitting, sit out uh, on their decks and, and whatnot and, um, and enjoy the uh, longer, longer days of sunshine. We don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know if this state of emergency will be extended another 30 days to the past the one that's been uh, contemplated to the end of June. Uh, we know it's, it's like to almost midnight around here, 11 o'clock. We've got to be very conscious of uh, how we impact uh, individuals' rights to, to uh, sit outside without the lose, losing the moral authority to, uh, to govern. Right now, very pleased to say that uh, all the citizens are being very respectful 
and compliant. They're they're voluntarily complying with um, with the the, uh, the regulations surrounding surrounding this. So that's that would be the trigger point. If the chief ever called me up in the morning and said, the majority of the time the constables were spending last night was on COVID-19 calls, fine, we'd have to do something. Right now, that's not the case. So again, thank you very much to all the citizens, and residents out there that are complying voluntarily with uh, with the rules and regulations surrounding social distancing. Thank, uh, again, thank you to everybody out there. Is there any any need to uh, follow up with that response? So, uh, Bob and Mayor Peter. FM, I'd like to ask Chief Gauthier um, if there's anything more to it. Why police are not recommending a curfew? Is, is there anything more to it than what the mayor just said? No, I think uh, thanks, Bob. I think the mayor uh, touched on all of the points very, very well. Uh, I can tell you that the only uh, things that we've been doing is educating people. We've uh, issued a couple of warnings. We haven't even uh, written up any type of offense notices yet. So until that time comes, and you heard the break right from the mayor, uh, uh, people are being very, very respectful, and they're being very, very good with us. So uh, hats off to the, our community. So would you change and recommend a curfew be put in place if you find your officers are spending too much time enforcing the social distancing rules? It would certainly have to be a discussion between uh, the mayor and I and the rest of the team. Yeah, I would have to uh, consider it at one point, but again, we're far from being there. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate that. So it's Lydia know, again. Lydia. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Lydia. With a quick, quick one. So, Mayor, I know before Easter, uh, backyard parties and, and the of you noticed a, a big change since uh, you were issuing quite a few reminders for people to abide all the, the rules and laws? That's exactly right. Uh, they respected the request, they understood the severity of the situation and uh, responded accordingly, so very, very happy. Um, I don't understand Bob's question. Um, we were here every day at noon hour. We're very transparent and forthright with, with everything we're doing, so um, there's no hidden agenda here on a curfew. I don't understand where that question was coming from. Oh, Your Worship, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not implying, excuse me, I'm not implying that there is any, any hidden agenda. I was just wondering about um, uh, where, how and when the Chief would recommend a curfew, have, with you having said yesterday that the police service is not recommending a curfew. That's all it was. I wasn't implying any hidden agenda, and if you interpreted it that way, I apologize. Okay, well, sorry for interpreting it. Just as simple as the Chief saying, this is out of control, and we've got to do something, so we're spending way too much time, rather than straight police work, on, on enforcing, uh, on enforcing uh, social distance rules. And that's exactly what I understood. Thank you for that. You're welcome. So are there any other uh, call, uh, questions from the media? Hearing none, then I will uh, ask Mayor Peary to, uh, to sum up. Um, we only have a few minutes left in our time slot here, so... I'll uh, sum up very quickly. Again, um, this was the news with a, um, an incident or a case in a long-term care facility is uh, about the, the worst type of news the, the municipality could, could receive. Uh, there will be a wall of worry with all the individuals that will be called by the Parkland Health Unit today. Uh, as you can expect, uh, again, understand as this spreads through our community, there are a lot of people under a lot of stress. Please, please, please remain remain civil. Keep the civility in the community. Uh, we'll get through this together. I'll have another statement from another young individual. I'll read tomorrow, but we're out of time today to read that. Thanks again for participating in this call. You can understand just exactly how busy everybody is right now. Thank you.